Hey, this is Justin with DayTradeTheMarkets.com. Wanted to take a quick look at the E-mini S&P uh, following the day on Thursday, the 12th of April. Now, if you've seen any of our prior videos, you know we like to look at various pieces of evidence, both from the bigger picture and from the shorter term within the day using our, our software tool to try to find situations where a lot of those pieces of evidence line up and we can get good trades. And a lot of days, that's pretty easy. If you saw the, the, the trade video I did from a couple of days ago on Tuesday, you know, that was a beautiful situation where, you know, our buy, our bigger picture bias was down and then our shorter term structure was down everything basically lined up beautifully and it turned out to be a really nice trade um, and those are the days you kind of live for as a trader then there are days like yesterday Wednesday where the market basically did a whole lot of nothing and, and sometimes the best thing you can do is is just stand aside and then there are days like today that are what we call conflict type days where I'll try to explain that what I mean by that but uh, head, heading into the day our bigger picture bias and when I say bigger picture I, I'm basically talking about you know we're looking at the bias over the last couple of days to a couple of weeks so heading into the day that the bigger picture bias was down so all things equal we would rather be taking trades on the short side okay um, now heading into the day also we were kinda of looking overnight to kinda of watching this 1370 50 area in here um, one of the levels that we watch bigger picture that we talk about going into the day and we were expecting some much uh, follow through lower yesterday we didn't get any follow through lower overnight we did then trade back above the 70 50 level overnight but then we opened back below so you know the 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 interday bias is still kind of in play down however early in the day and this is where you know we talk about kind of you know making sure that the shorter term structure is matching the longer term structure and in this case it wasn't because the and I'll show you some some we can zoom in on this a little bit as well but I'll show you some structure that we look at in our software that was basically telling us the bulls were in control most of the day and so early on here you can see we have what's called a high velocity move I know it's a little tough to see but a high velocity move we get follow through right away that's telling us that uh, the bulls are, are pretty much in control and then they just pierce right through this 70 level so early in the day so far we're, we're seeing that the bulls are in control now around this level here let me draw a little consolidation right there you can see that we had what we call a level two buying aggression bar telling us buyers are trying to make a push and then a level two selling aggression bar and so you know in a, in a sense during that little half an hour stretch we were in a bit of a consolidation you can also see we had some decelerations at the high of that consolidation deceleration at the low of that consolidation but essentially very short term we were having a bit of a battle okay and so we wanted to see who's gonna win we don't know is the market gonna make another run lower is the market gonna consolidate or are we gonna make another run higher we've pushed through this 70 level we've had acceptance above this high velocity move so we're kind of leaning bullish but then bigger picture we're kind of leaning bearish so again it's kind of a conflict you want to kind of wait and see what the evidence is telling us so the first half an hour of the day or so was one was won by the bulls uh, now we wanted to see what happens when we we kind of had some mixed evidence in here and you can see that when we then tested below that you know semi consolidation we decelled and then the market just took off another um, high velocity move and it's a little hard to see but a level three buying aggression bar there on the high of the day and we know when that happens and we get immediate follow through that the bulls are just firmly in control so this is a type of situation where short-term structure all the evidence is pointing toward bulls being in control and that's even more so we had another level we were looking at around 1377 when we just pierced right through that 1377 and you can see that 77 level really acted as some pretty nice support the rest of the day so all signs are pointing to the bulls being in control um, we have you know some potential what we call confluence opportunities here where we have the green uh, zone the support zone with a green filter with deceleration you know so a lot of evidence is lining up there we are above the the uh, 77 support so again evidence is saying you know if you if you want everything to be in alignment you don't have that because the bigger picture bias was still down but the shorter term structure the flow of the market this day was telling us buyers are in control so then we go and test this level up here around the, the 83 area we bounce off of that but then we test again into this lower support zone this green level that that's formed the market rallies higher we then take out this uh, 83 level toward the end of the day with another potential good confluence setup and you know I know it's easy to see these things in hindsight but and, and that's really doesn't do you that much good the, the point is the way we look at this evidence 
again, it's ideal like on Tuesday when everything lines up, we have the bigger picture bias and the shorter term structure lining up. In this case, we didn't really have that. So you have a couple options. If, if you're a more conservative trader, you can just wait for those days where everything lines up. And that's, you know, two, three days a week, everything is going to line up and you can get a few nice trades opportunities a day. There's other days where, um, you know, you have to kind of focus in on what's going on short term. What's the flow of the market telling us? You can still be a bit nimble, be conservative, but today, all of the evidence, you know, all of our big structures that we watch, those kind of battle points, they were all won by bulls. And so, um, that's just kind of the the way that we look at it. It gives a gives us a heads up as to what's going on in the market. And you know, the way that that, that we teach this, the way that I certainly look at this, is I try to focus in on direction. Do I have a confident idea of what direction the market's going in? And that's where I really think these high velocity moves, aggression bars, you know, the filter again caught this pretty early that we were the bulls were, were in control. I like to see you know, kind of who's winning those structures, who's winning those those short term structures that that this software provides in a, in a really unique way that that I'm um, I'm just loving and, and people that I've talked to that are using this are, are loving it as well. So um, if this looks interesting to you at all and you have questions, certainly let us know. Otherwise, um, hope you find this educational in in terms of how to you know when to balance what's bigger picture versus what's shorter term and and just follow the evidence. I know I was talking to someone today who um, said that they always second guess themselves and you know this has really been helping them with that because you know you you kind of do uh we talk we have one section in our training where we talk about some sort of the the mathematics of it and you kind of do a, a pros and cons of what the evidence is telling you and we teach how to look at all this evidence obviously and today the evidence was clearly telling us bulls were in control so um if you know basically anything you could do to get on the long side you were going to be okay and then you could you know uh once you were confident on the direction you can certainly hone in on on places to be looking to get long in these green zones or with any of these decelerations and, and so forth um, so you know that's the idea of the confluence trading where you're waiting for a lot of the evidence to uh, to stack up in your favor and the more evidence you have in your favor the more structure that you see that's in your favor the better your odds are going to be certainly doesn't mean uh, every trade you take is going to be a winner but um, uh, that's you know you're just trying to stack the odds in your favor so um, as far as looking ahead to Friday areas we want to monitor we're kind of in a transition back to the up from the down but we kind of want to monitor this 77 level and then this 8750 level so let's see what that does overnight let's see what the market does when it opens in the regular trading hours that's kind of our if, if the market's gonna trade below this 77 level you know the transition up might be failing if the market can take out this 8750 area the transition up, you know, is more is more. Um, you could have more confidence in it. And as we stay in here, we're we're basically in a transition zone. You know, if you're looking at a hockey game, it's it's the neutral zone, so to speak. So uh, that's uh, that's what we're looking at. Uh, hopefully, you found this educational and helpful. And let us know if you have any questions at all. Uh, talk to you later. Thanks.